love the channel and find it useful in becoming a happy retiree. Subscribe today. I'm high. It's also the 20th anniversary of one of the best stocks really that has ever gone public in the United States, particularly in, the, in our generation in the last 20 years. And of course, that stock is Amazon. And there's a real narrative around Amazon and not just that the stock's done really well. And we know that you can look at a chart and see that the, a dollar has turned into almost $500. And we'll go over some of those ideas relative to what the S&P has done, relative to what other retailers are done. But the narrative around owning a company that's been this good and this solid is pretty incredible, if you ask me. And the sheer emotional fortitude it's taken to stay in this stock. If you look at Amazon today, close to an all-time high, you say, oh, that's an easy trade. But there have been so many periods of time with, when Amazon has got just not just small corrections, we're talking about 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent corrections along the way in this storied company. There's also a narrative around companies that have become more efficient over time. So companies that are doing more with less, more output, more market cap, more revenue, more profit in many cases with less and less and less and fewer workers. So there's an interesting commentary around and some research that I'm going to talk to you about with companies that have the lowest amount of people relative to their size and output in contrast to companies that have a ton of people and not as much economic output and the difference that that has caused in the market. How have these stocks done? Not just the companies, but what is what have these stocks done? And I just pulled, well, let's just go over some of these numbers. So 20 years ago, the, really this past week, Amazon went public, May of 1997. Back then, so let's go back about 20 years. There are about 7,500 publicly traded stocks in the United States. And how many indexes were there? There were like a handful. The S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ, of course. Back then, it was the Lehman Brothers bond, aggregate bond index. Today, it's the Barclays bond, aggregate bond index. There are a handful of these indexes, indices really to be, to, to, is, is really what I should say is indices. Today, which this is almost hard to believe, there are only about 40, uh, there's, there are only about 4,000 publicly traded stocks in the United States. So we've gone from 7,500 all the way down to 4,000. Part of that is that, yes, you've got some companies that have gone out of business, but then you have giant companies that merge. Two big stocks merge into one. We've written about that. And th that takes a company away because now both companies are trading under one symbol and it's a giant conglomerate. And there's been a lack of IPOs and you've got big companies that have not cho that have chosen not to go public. Airbnb, still private. Uber, still private. So there's, there, there has been a real change in the dynamics of how many publicly traded companies there are out there. So that has been shrinking. But the number of indices are over the, around the world, it's ballooned. And now there's 5,000. There's over 5,000 indices. It's, all, it's, it's hard to even believe there are more indices that track stocks than there are individual stocks. Again, does that make the market confusing for investors? I think it does. It, that makes it even more difficult to figure out. There's not just one index to track. You want to be an index investor, sure, you could just do the S&P 500, but if you're doing the S&P 500, you're investing in only about 10% of publicly traded stocks and bonds around the world. So you're choosing to just hone in on that one particular index. So that goes back to this big argument about active versus passive investing. I'm a, I'm a big believer that the real answer to that question, what's better active passive, is just good low cost, cost passive and low cost active as those two worlds have to some extent merged together and there's a gray zone between actively traded mutual funds have come down in price, ETFs, exchange traded funds, some of them have become more active and a little bit more costly. But th the key here is to keep your costs low. Most investors can't just sit in an index for most of their investing life. It just emotionally doesn't work for most people. For some people, it's fine. But for most people, it's not realistic. So let's go back to Amazon. If, we go, if you put $10,000 in Amazon back when they went public, back in 1997, what's, what's remarkable about this is that it's worth 
million dollars today. 10,000 turns into $4.9 million today. SP 500, 10,000 turns into 30,000 over the same period of time. 10,000 Macy's during that same exact period of time. Obviously, there's been a dynamic shift between online retail and physical retail, particularly in department stores. Macy's, 10,000 has turned into, well, 10,000. So it's gone effectively nowhere over 20 years if you have invested in that company. $10,000 in Apple, way back 20 years ago, now worth about two and a half million dollars. So there's been this remarkable shift in what's happened around the world. And to me, there's a real commentary on what that means for investors. Hi, I'm Wes Moss, and thanks for taking a minute to hear about what's so different about my new book, You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think. So unlike other retirement books, this book will give you a step-by-step guide, whether in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, to learn from what these successful and happy retirees did to get there. I hope you enjoy the book, but more importantly, I know that it'll help you retire sooner than you think.